everyone, welcome to the DC Today. It is Thursday and we are in our last DC Today of the week. We'll have a Dividend Cafe for you tomorrow on the U.S. energy sector and our thoughts on investing in that space right now and a whole lot of ramifications around energy, geopolitics, uh, the economy, and so forth. As for today, uh, kind of bizarre day in the market. So I'm going to do this quickly. Uh, the um, Dow ended up down 431 points, but it was down at the beginning of the day, um, you know, 300 and something points like that, rallied all the way back, it came to where it was down less than 100. Then in the final, let's see here, um, let's call it an hour, final hour of the day gave, fell again. So you had kind of a drop, then a rally, then a drop. Uh, the Dow down 1.2%, the S&P 1.4%, the NASDAQ 1.8%. Uh, the 10-year was only up five basis points in the yield. Um, the best performing sector today was consumer staples, and it was down 0.79%. Uh, so you had one of those days where the breadth of the drop was significant enough that uh, all uh, 11 sectors in the S&P were down. Um, consumer staples was the best or down the least, utilities after that, real estate after that, healthcare after that. So there's your four most defensive sectors and they were the best performing yet still negative sectors in the market. The worst was consumer discretionary which was down uh, over 2%, about 2.2%. So um, that was uh, the state of affairs in the stock market and bond market today. Oil was pretty flattish, down, down a little bit, not much. So what was going on in the market today? Well, the producer price index uh, rose more than expected in January. This is wholesale prices. It was up 0.7% and we had been expecting 0.4%. Uh, energy prices, of course, were up 5% because you remember they were down so much throughout the fourth quarter. They came back up and that caused uh, a movement on the energy side of producer prices. Food prices were down 1% on the month. On the services side, the uh, primary contributor to higher wholesale prices was hospital outpatient care. So I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that that's not a real Fed sensitive area in the market. Um, but nevertheless, that, that feeling that the price levels were not dropping substantially, it still then creates more market volatility around the will they, won't they stuff with the Fed, which you know uh, well what I think about all that. Uh, housing starts in January were down 4.5%, uh, which is more than had been expected. So single family home, as far as new housing starts, were down 27% year over year. Um, this is the fifth month in a row of declining level of starts. One thing I just want to bring up real quickly, and then I'll let you go, from yesterday's talk about the retail sales number, uh, I read a report this morning from Corbu uh, Research, who, as you know, I read uh, daily, and Samuel Rines, who is a good friend and a very smart thinker, pointed out, and I'm sure others have pointed out too, but I hadn't thought of it yet, and Sam is an original thinker, and I wanted to share uh, with attribution that the first month of the Social Security increase from 2022 to 2023, where people got an 8.7% increase in their benefit was January. And when you take the median level of what that benefit represents across the average Social Security benefit that is paid to 70 million people, by the way, uh, it's $140 a month. And so is there a chance that that better than expected retail sales number yesterday is related to the first month of higher social security? Or do you think that nobody over 65 <laughs> spends money anymore? I wouldn't, I can't prove it. Sam can't prove it. We can't track exactly what it's from, but it's something. And it's worth considering that maybe there was a little extra spending money in people's pocketbooks as a result of that social security increase. Uh, read the dctoday.com for me on me interacting with Larry Lindsay, who's an economist I like a great deal, who has an opinion I disagree with a great deal about how the Fed should be taking its cues from financial conditions and um, that financial conditions are suggesting to the Fed they haven't tightened enough. And I provide a response to that 
uh, I think, problematic viewpoint. Um, that's all I have for today in the DC Today. Look forward to Dividend Cafe tomorrow. You have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.